Many regard Miranda as the most famous legal decision in American criminal justice history. It has become iconic through popular culture and has set a global standard. But on the occasion of the ruling's 50th anniversary, there are concerns that Miranda's safeguards have been eroded by subsequent decisions. The American Bar Association's 2016 Law Day theme focused on Miranda at 50, and an expert panel gathered to discuss the ruling that has become part of our national culture. Their discussion provides the focus for this edition of Rewind. Law Day 2016 commemorates the 50th anniversary of the Warren Court's landmark ruling in Miranda v. Arizona. Miranda, of course, has famously required, famously required certain warnings to be given criminal suspects in order for their statements and custodial interrogation to be admissible evidence in court. Since 1966, Miranda has had a profound influence on interrogation law and criminal justice in countries around the globe. At the dawn of the 21st century, the Supreme Court declared in Dickinson versus the United States that Miranda has become part of our national culture. I think when most people think about Miranda, they think, well, police officers either aren't allowed to ask me questions, or if they ask me questions and they don't give Miranda warnings, then somehow the police have done something illegal. I think they don't understand that, first of all, it doesn't apply unless they're in custody, first of all, and so police officers can often ask people questions, uh, and they don't understand what the remedy is. The remedy is, uh, you know, if there's a trial, uh, and, and Miranda's violated, then that statement they make can't be introduced at trial. In the 50 years since Miranda, uh, it has been limited so much. There's so, uh, you know, it's been cut back. There are a lot of exceptions to Miranda. There are a lot of circumstances in which Miranda doesn't apply. And I think people don't quite understand that um, and, and think that it, it means more than it really means. Mm. It was easy for the court in 2000 to, uh, to um, finally sanctioned Miranda as a constitutional decision uh, because it had gutted it for the past um, three decades. And uh, Miranda doesn't, didn't stand in 2000 and, and stands even less today for the principles that I think um, Chief Justice Warren thought it stood for uh, in 1966. And in the post 9-11 world, have we seen an acceleration of that erosion in, in the hyper security environment? Is that adding to? Well, the public safety exception and the Boston bombing is a perfect example. If, if there's a threat to public safety, then uh, you can ask uh, and, and question uh, a suspect because you're trying to figure out, you know, is there a gun? The initial case had, was Quarles had to deal with a gun that was, uh, you know, in, in the loose, on the loose in, in the community. Uh, and then you may have bombs, that additional bombs that haven't gone off that people could trigger. And so, when there is a public safety exception, uh, you're able to avoid uh, uh, the, the requirements of Miranda as far as questioning. When I think about Miranda, it's not so much about public safety, it's about investigating crimes and getting information from the individual that's going to help the government to prosecute that person. Um, and certainly Miranda, I mean, certainly if you don't give Miranda and the person talks, there's nothing more powerful, there's not a more powerful piece of evidence than words coming out of the defendant's mouth saying, I did this, right? I mean, that's a powerful piece of evidence. Um, but then you have to balance it, as you say, against that person's right. And, and I, the way I like to look at it is, you know, not just the right to remain silent, but the very words of the Fifth Amendment, which is no person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. Uh since, Angela, you mentioned that you work for the Public Defender's Office, to what extent is, is Miranda being undermined from the other end, that there's simply not enough money going to pay for public defenders, or that so little pay is given to them that they have to case, take so many cases that they don't have time to devote to providing a property? We truly have a crisis in indigent defense these days. Um, we have, in, in Louisiana now, the, the situation is at such a, a crisis point where you know, there are public defender offices that have one public defender and they can't possibly handle all of the cases. But here's the thing, Miranda is talking about questioning in the police station and, you know, even though it says, you know, if, if you'd like to have an attorney, one will be provided for you, the court didn't mean that one was going to be provided for the person in the police station. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's, when you read it, the, the case, and I've read it many times, I, I think, you know, I wonder how many people on the court at that time really understood how, how the system works for poor people. For more on this and other related topics, visit wilsoncenter.org.